Welcome to Focus on Faith, the program that brings you portraits of faith from across the nation. Join us as we bring you the faith of men and women from all walks of life who truly represent the spirit of America as we focus on faith. and welcome to Focus on Faith. I'm Cynthia Anderson, bringing you a worldwide fellowship of Christians in action. Today's featured Christian in action is Colonel James B. Irwin. He'll be sharing his personal portrait of faith. In this candid, unrehearsed, on-location interview, Colonel Irwin shares his life's testimony of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this particular interview was filmed back in the 1980s. Here now is a brief update on Jim Irwin. Born March 17, 1930, James B. Irwin, an Air Force Colonel, was commissioned in the Air Force. And after graduation from the Naval Academy, he graduated from the Air Force Experimental Test Pilot School in 1961, and then the Aerospace Research Pilot School in 1963. Irwin served with the F-12 Test Force at Edwards Air Force Base, California, and with the AIM-47 Project at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. Colonel Irwin was one of the 19 astronauts selected by NASA in April 1966. Since the beginning of time until now, only 12 men have stepped foot on the celestial body. Colonel James B. Irwin was one of them. Now, Irwin served as the lunar module pilot for the Apollo 15 mission to the moon. The spacecraft launched on schedule from Cape Canaveral on July 26, 1971, and concluded with a Pacific splashdown and subsequent recovery by the USS Okinawa on August 7, 1971. Now, while on the moon, at the end of the first day exploring the rugged lunar highlands, Colonel Irwin said he was reminded of his favorite biblical passage from Psalm 121. As speaking by radio to Mission Control in Houston, he began quoting the passage. I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And then he added, but of course we get a lot of help from Houston too. Now, his historic flight to the moon on board Apollo 15 was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He was the eighth man to step on the moon's surface, and his flight was the first to drive the lunar rover. Irwin and his fellow astronauts have earned a place in history along with other famous explorers, which have changed the course of our lives. Mr. Irwin often spoke of the lunar mission as an epiphany, saying, I felt this power of God as I'd never felt it before. Now, Jim Irwin retired from the Astronaut Corps in 1972, and 11 years after retiring, and fueled by his beliefs, Irwin was on Mount Ararat hunting for Noah's Ark on the first of several missions to eastern Turkey. He nearly lost his life on Mount Ararat after being badly injured by falling rocks in 1982. Now, by the late 1980s, Irwin stopped his search. He had conquered the moon, but couldn't quite unearth the fabled vessel. He said, it's easier to walk on the moon. I've done all I possibly can, but the ark continues to elude us. Colonel Irwin said that his experience exploring the moon on Apollo 15 moved him to devote the rest of his life to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, shortly after his retirement, Irwin began the, as the founding president of the High Flight Foundation, an interdenominational evangelical organization based in Colorado Springs. Now, the name High Flight was inspired by this famous aviator's poem by John Gillespie Maggie Jr., a copy of which was carried to the moon by Colonel Irwin on Apollo 15. And it goes like this. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silver wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence hovering there. I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious burning blue I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace. 
where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind, I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. Now, Colonel Jim Irwin passed away on August 8, 1991. He is survived by his wife, Mary Ellen, and their five children. Now, this interview was filmed back in the 1980s at Grace Baptist Church in Nanuet, New York. And since that time, literally multitudes of people, young and old, have seen this timeless focus on faith testimony through public service programming and cable networks. Now, Irwin's classic and timeless testimony will continue radiating the light of his love of Jesus Christ through Telemissions International's New Life's Lighthouse series of programs that will be continually shining the light into a dark world on what my husband likes to call the shores of cyberspace. Now, his interview, along with many, many personal and timeless testimonies captured over the past 30 to 40 years, will continually be bringing the good news for decades to come through our unique Life's Lighthouse series. So won't you join us as we learn what Colonel James B. Irwin's focus on faith is all about to help us in our daily lives through his personal and spiritual insights in this classic and timeless testimony now beaming out as a beacon of light, bringing faith and hope to a hurting world. The journey of Apollo 15 had begun four days earlier, July 26, 1971. The crew, Dave Scott, spacecraft commander and veteran of Gemini 8 and Apollo 9. Jim Irwin, lunar module pilot, who would explore Hadley Rill and the Apennine Front with Scott. Al Warden, command module pilot, who would remain in lunar orbit operating an extensive array of cameras and experiments and making observations which, when coupled with the surface work of Scott and Irwin, would give the most comprehensive picture of the moon's structure and history ever achieved. We have complete clearance to launch. We are go. 15 seconds. Guidance internal. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence start. Engines on. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All engines running. Launch commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Precisely on schedule, 9.34 a.m., Apollo 15 lifted from the pad on its way to the moon. And we have a fifth program. Roger. Roger. With the exception of a few minor problems, the trip out would be uneventful. The command module Endeavour, carrying the lunar module Falcon, would arrive in lunar orbit with Scott's announcement, Hello, Houston. The Endeavour is on station with cargo and what a fantastic sight. Oh, this is really profound. I'll tell you, this is absolutely mind-boggling up here. Gentlemen, I can well imagine that a foreign planet must be a weird thing to see. We're indeed delighted to welcome Colonel Jim Irwin to Focus on Faith. Welcome, Jim Irwin, to... Nanuet, New York, before our camera. Thank you very much, Gordon. Colonel Jim Irwin, how would you describe, in layman's language, what a liftoff is really like? Well, liftoff is undoubtedly the most exciting ride any person could ever go on. Uh, one reason for that is the anticipation. You know, you're lying there for several hours, wondering and waiting. Of course, wondering whether, you know, everything's going to work all right. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's upon you. There's that thrill, that excitement, that joy, that supreme uh, exaltation, really, to know that you're finally leaving the Earth. It must be a terrific experience. Now, airline pilots, as I've conversed with them over the nation, they're constantly alert for mid-air collisions. Uh, were you ever worried, uh, Colonel Jim Irwin, of uh, colliding possibly with space garbage or meteors, for example? Well, there was a concern about uh, other objects traveling through space, not necessarily uh, space garbage, because most of that is tracked by, you know, radar and telescopes. But as far as uh, stray objects, you know, other meteorites, uh, there's always that risk. Well, could the Apollo spacecraft withstand a meteor strike? Well, 
It could. Uh, the big problem is, you know, where does it strike? How large is the hole created, if there is a hole created? Uh, what the leak rate is, uh, of course, uh, hopefully when it strikes, we would be in a spacesuit because that gives us a great deal of protection. Uh, Colonel Jim Irwin, what about those moon rocks you brought back to this Earth? We've heard so many different stories about them. And I understand you have a sample with you here today. I, I do. I have uh, a replica of the Genesis rock that we found up there at Hadley Base. This is an exact replica of the, the oldest rock that's been found in the universe. And it was already named Genesis by the time we brought it back to the Earth, but it's a rock that's been age dated at something over four billion years old. Four billion years. Uh, physical characteristics up there, Jim, on handling the rocks. There are different types. Uh, could you describe that to us? Well, we had uh, a great variety of rocks uh, at our site. We had uh, black rocks, of course, coal black, basaltic rocks. We had white rocks, well, white rock, this Genesis rock. We had green rocks. Then we had rocks that had crystals of all different colors. So we had a, uh, a rather unique assortment of different types. I presume the geologists have made their analyses by now. And there's been some very definite strides in the scientific world of the geologists regarding moon rock. Is that so? Well, they've come up with some, uh, some new theories. Of course, there are some more questions, too, because I think that's very typical, you know, of man's advancement of, of knowledge that always there are more and more questions to be answered. Now, preparing for this interview, Colonel Jim Irwin, I had the privilege of reading your new book, To Rule the Night, and I was thrilled to read that book. In fact, I have a copy here with me, and I want the TV audience out there to get a close look at Colonel Jim Irwin's brand new book, To Rule the Night, published by Holman Company. In fact, Colonel Irwin has told me before going on camera that he and his organization, High Flight Foundation in Colorado Springs, Colorado, will gladly send you a copy of this with his personal autograph, if you will just write your letter to us, Focus on Faith, and the address which follows this program, we'll be glad to forward your letter to Colonel Jim Irwin personally. Or else you can go out to your local bookstore and buy this, one of the best sellers for sure, coming up. I recommend this book very highly, Jim Irwin, not just because you're on camera, but I'm sure it'll be an inspiration to many hundreds of thousands of American young people especially. And we were personally thrilled in reading it. You've had your ups and downs for sure in life, haven't you, Jim? Well, I really have uh, so many downs that, you know, it's, it's a miracle that I was ever able to, to make the trip into space. Well, there were tears and lumps in my throat a few times reading your book, Jim, and we commend it most highly to our TV audiences out there. Now, Jim, on the moon, you said in your book that you had some personal experiences that uh, were very meaningful in your life uh, relative to thinking on God. In a personal way, could you tell us about that? Well, that's true because I, I felt his presence there. Uh, and some people question in their mind when I use those words, but I don't know any other words to properly describe the feeling because it was just like there, someone else was there. Uh, you know, there was answer to prayer, there was guidance, guidance as far as finding this very important rock, and then the inspiration, constant inspiration while we were there. Well, it's for certain that it's manifest in your life. Now, I've met you just maybe half an hour ago, and I can sense there's been a deep motivating force in your life, and certainly you believe this is God. And I know that you relate to America in a most unusual way, not just being one of our great astronauts and celebrities as such. But the thing that impresses us, especially to invite you to this program, is your focus on faith in God. In your book, um, you mentioned, Jim, that there was a personal commitment in your life concerning the faith of Jesus Christ. Could you tell us about that briefly? Uh, that's true. I made that personal commitment to Christ when I was a young man, 11 years old, uh, during a church revival down in... Uh, in Florida, where we were living at that time. Do you remember exactly uh, any experience relative to that? Well, I still remember the, the night, the occasion very vividly, and still refer to it as the most exciting moment of my, in my life, even exceeding, you know, the thrill of the liftoff of Apollo 15.
that personal commitment you made as a young fellow to Jesus Christ. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's right. That personal relationship with God through, through Christ. Now, would you recommend this commitment to young people of America today? Oh, absolutely. I, I tell not only young people, but everyone, really. I tell them all that there, there is a plan for their life, that God is interested in them, he loves them, and he wants to guide them as they live their lives. And they can realize this plan through this personal relationship. With Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, Jim, the title of your book, I understand, is taken from a Bible verse, Genesis 1.16. Uh, therefore, I'm curious indeed to have our audience know out there, you must have thought much about the Bible its relativity to science, the world all about us, the universes above us. Uh, in your own words, could you tell the young people, especially out there, uh, how you feel about the Bible, reading it today, and believing it? Well, I believe it's the most important book that anyone could read. And then, most importantly, if they'll only believe the words that are in that greatest book, that then they themselves shall have a ticket for a very high flight, the highest flight. Of course, the, the title of the book, you know, came from, from Genesis because on the fourth day God created two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And I had a chance to, to visit that lesser light, the moon, but the book is really more than that. It talks about more than just the moon. It talks about the light of Jesus Christ that can command anyone's life and illuminate their darkest hours. Uh, Jim, from that to this, do you have a family? Yes, uh, of course I have a wife and five children. We just recently added uh, another little boy to our, our group, uh, a little boy that we found over in Vietnam. Uh, together as a family, do you read the Bible? We do. We try to have family worship every evening, and uh, together we read the Bible and then pray together. Out of the entire Holy Bible, Jim Irwin, is there one favorite Bible verse you would care to tell us about? Well, the one that I tried to quote on the moon, of course, is, is one of my very favorites. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. But I should continue that, my help cometh from the Lord. That's positive, Jim. That's very personal. And we want you to know it's been a thrill for us to have you here on Focus on Faith today, Colonel Jim Irwin. And we wish God's richest blessing upon your family, upon your new work, as president of High Flight Foundation, traveling over the world, telling the good news of your faith in Jesus Christ. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much, Gordon. I've enjoyed being with you this afternoon. I'll just pray for your work, for telemissions around the world, reaching other people, everyone really for Christ. Thank you, Colonel Jim Irwin, for a positive focus on your faith in Jesus Christ. Hey, thank you for joining us today with my sincere hope that you have been blessed as I have. You're watching Focus on Faith with our guests sharing their timeless testimony and what an amazing testimony and story it is about how trusting in God and turning our challenges over to Him, how that changes our lives and enables miracles and healing in our lives. Now we all know the power of a personal testimony and this and many more classic testimonies like this, they will continue be, continually be bringing light into a dark world for decades to come through Telemissions International's new Life's Lighthouse series of programs. This picture of the lighthouse that you see on the stormy shores of the Outer Banks is our hallmark signifying the importance of Telemissions International reaching out to multitudes for Christ. Just think of it. Every timeless testimony that is being broadcast is like a beacon of light beaming out the good news on the stormy shores of cyberspace for decades to come. Now in closing, today's timeless testimony was a beacon of light and it may have impacted someone out there and God is speaking to you right now and that person wants to commit their life to follow Christ. Friend, I would encourage you to start by reading your Bible and to begin to practice what the Bible says. And I pray that you will get strong in the desire to go out and find a good Bible teaching church to join. And to not let yourself get distracted, but rather you will make this a priority in your life to seek God's will for a new life in Christ. 
Now, if you truly want to know more about having a more abundant and fulfilling life, then this booklet, Beginning with Christ by Navigators International, is a great way to get started. And I want to send this to you absolutely free if you'll just call 1-800-28-FAITH. That's right, just call 1-800-28-FAITH, and I will be happy to send this to you absolutely free. Just leave your name and address, and I will mail it out directly. Or if you prefer, you can simply email us at info at telemissions.org and request this free booklet there. And if you have a special prayer request, let us know. We will include your request in our daily prayer time. Now, in closing, if you would like to know more about Telemissions International and how this unique ministry got started, just visit our website, telemissions.org, and learn the story of how these many timeless testimonies were recorded in the early 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And now they will live on for decades to come. Also, you can purchase a copy of Born to Preach by the late Dr. Gordon Anderson, Sr. This book tells the riveting life story of my father as a, travel, a traveling evangelist minister. This book, Born to Preach, guides the reader through his travels, triumphs, and struggles. My father's book explains about the difficulties and challenges of being in the ministry along with how he got started in television and on location interviews like the one you just saw along with many others, with doctors, senators, astronauts, and much, much more over his 70-year ministry. It is my hope that this book will speak to those of you who may be considering a life in the ministry, and I know it is an inspiration and has captivated and swayed the hearts of young and old readers alike. It's available on our website, telemissions.org. Check it out, and don't forget, to subscribe. Leave a comment on our website and tell your friends about this new series of programs. Thanks again for joining us today. This is Dr. Gordon Anderson, Jr. sharing with you our prayer promise. And that is Psalm 121, verse 2. That says, My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And friend, remember to start every day in prayer. Now God's richest blessings as you focus your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I, I still remember the, the night, the occasion very vividly, and still refer to it as the most exciting moment of my, in my life, even exceeding, you know, the thrill of the liftoff of Apollo 15. That personal commitment you made as a young fellow to Jesus Christ, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's right, that personal relationship with God through, through Christ. Now, would you recommend this commitment young people of America today? Oh, absolutely. I, I tell not only young people, but everyone, really. I tell them all that there, there is a plan for their life, that God is interested in it. He loves them, and He wants to guide them as they live their lives. And they can realize this plan through this personal relationship.